Welcome to Bramley Christian Fellowship Church. We hope you enjoy today's service. Father, we thank you. You're an awesome God. We thank you that your greatness is in this place to touch your people and bless them this day. So, Father, we open our hearts up to you. We open our worship up to you. And we thank you for inhabiting our praises this day in Jesus' name.
Father, we just take a moment to just remember your faithfulness to us. In the good times and bad, you are a God alone and you are on your throne. You are being faithful to us and we thank you, God. Sing this to you. Great is thy faithfulness, O
your name, O oh Lord. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. Lord, you are awesome in this place. Lord, you are mighty. You are strong. You are fighting our battles for us. Oh, we give you praise, O oh Lord. You know, a few months ago, I shared this with the prime timers, the teens, prime timers that we pray on, on Wednesdays. A few months ago, one morning, I was, after my devotion I just I was I went I went to sleep and I found myself broke out in worship and I've never worshiped God like that before and I, I was going up a stairs and as I, as I was I lift my hand and I was worshiping God as I got to the top of the stairs, I saw this man coming down the stairs. I said, who are you? And he took my hand. And he took my hand and he took me in the air. And I was going up in the air. I said, oh, I said, oh God, show me a sign. Show me a sign, oh God, that you are real. And I looked down and I saw a big hole in the ground. And there was a stone in that hole. I said, oh God, what does this mean, oh God? Show me a sign, oh God. Tell me what does this mean. And when I turned around and looked, the man left me, but I was still going up in the air. And when I looked down, the hole was completely restored. I tell you this morning, church, we serve a mighty God this morning. A God who is able to restore. A God who is able to deliver. A God who is able to sustain us. Because his word declares, he said, every place that I cause my name to be honored, I will come and I will bless you. The Lord is in this house. The Lord is in this house. God wants to bless you. And he doesn't want to bless you tomorrow. He wants to bless you now. Because he said, every place that my name is honored, I will come and I will bless you. God is in the house to restore you. God is in the house to build you up. God is in the house to take away the scales from your eyes this morning. We serve a mighty God. God is going to restore you. God is going to restore those things that were taken away from you. Because he is a restorer. And he's a rewarder of them that would diligently seek his faith. Give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Kindly bow your heads with me. Our Father in heaven, we bless your name and we praise you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you are faithful, you are awesome, you are mighty, you are strong. You are our provider, Lord. And we sing that we, song that we sang that said, all that we need, O oh Lord, you have already provided for us. So, so, Father, we commit our eyes unto you. We commit our hearts unto you, O oh God. We commit our thoughts. We bring it captive to the obedience of your word. That, O oh God, that we will receive from you, O oh God, that which you have provided for us. So, Father, we just open our hearts to receive from you today. We bless you, we praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't God wonderful? Thank you so much. Well, it is a privilege for me to wish all the fathers happy Father's Day today. Thank you. Welcome. And if you're visiting for the first time, your guests for the first time, thank you for being part of Bramley Christian Fellowship. If you're watching via the internet, happy Father's Day to you. Thank you for being part of our family. Thank you for worshiping with us. God has something in store for you today. We have our wonderful children's ministry that is open. The security kiosk is also ready to receive your dear children. The nursery is ready to receive them. 
please register them and get them after the service. And we're going to take an opportunity and greet each other and bless God as we greet each other. Thank you so much. in the house. Yeah, happy Father's Day. Praise God. We are so blessed to be able to celebrate together on a great day, and I've been blessed. I still have my dad, and I get to celebrate with him today, so that's a blessing, and yesterday we got to celebrate with our bonus dad, Dad Morgan, and it's a blessing to still have two of those with us today for Father's Day. When you came in today, you received a package like this, if you didn't receive one, please raise your hand at this time, and one of our ushers will be happy to serve you. Or if you need a pen, please indicate that as well. In your package, you'll receive a connection card just like this. If you want to take a moment and please complete the front part of that card, please make sure you give us the best phone number to reach you at and your email address so we can stay in contact with you. Also, please indicate if this is your first time visiting with us at BCF or if you're a regular attender, just make that um, note on your card. If you're with us today for the first time, then we have a special gift just for you. It's at the end of the service right over at the Welcome Center. We'll give you instructions a little later on, but be sure to join us there if this is your first time visiting with us at BCF. And then just hang on to this connection card and we'll be collecting them at the end of the service. Praise God. God is so good. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. How many people have had a great week this week? Amen. How many people are believing for an even greater week coming up? Hallelujah. Well, you know, I, I just was focusing the other day, a few days ago now, both uh, Wednesday or Thursday in particular, I was just focusing on the goodness of God and all that he's done for us. Now, I know some of you could break out into song right about now and sing some old songs, but... You know, I was just thinking about how God has blessed us, and simultaneous to that happening, I was, for those that you don't know this, I mean, many of you do know by now, but for those of you that don't know, I, I'm quite active in social media and Facebook and, and Twitter and, you know, some other social media programs, and one of the articles that I read was talking about one of the great, um, they were calling it the great myths of what's happening in Christianity today. And they were talking about how there's such a uh, focus on things and we call things blessings that those people that do not have those things, um, somehow they feel second class because they don't have them. 
And I began to think that through and process through my mind and through the word and, and through my spirit. And I began to realize that, you know, we, we don't look at, we're, we ought not to look at things as the ultimate marking of what a blessing is. You know, you are blessed with or without things. Amen? You know, Job said, you can take all these things away from me, but I still have God. Right? I'm still going to trust God. Amen? So whether we have things or don't have things, we are blessed. That is for sure. And so I was thinking about Philippians chapter 2. Now, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. We're not, I'm not going to read it to you this morning, just for the sake of time. But um, in, that, in those verses, and I want you to read them. There's some homework for you to do. Sometime, you know, take a chance to reread Philippians chapter 2, specifically verses 1 to 9. And it talks about how Jesus was willing to give up his divine um, nature to come and to live as a servant for you and I. That takes a big step. That's a huge step. And we do that in so many ways as believers. I believe that the heart of a believer is to serve. A heart of the believer is to serve. Well, you know what? There are ways to serve other than just going out and, and literally serving people. We do it with our finances as well. God has blessed us this week and previous weeks, and he will continue to bless us with finances and resources that come into our hands, that come into our bank accounts. And as believers, we give the 10% and more. We call it a tithe according to the Old Testament. And when we move into the New Testament, we see that they, it, it went from a tithe to they sold their possessions and they had everything in common. Amen? And so, you know, we, we, we give what we know is to be a, a, a base uh, uh, a tithe to the kingdom of God. But in addition to that, we quite often give gifts and offerings to, to God, and we give generously, and we give freely, we give liberally. You know what? We are a blessing, and we are a blessing to be blessings to others. So this morning, as you prepare your offering, you're not just preparing to give away money. You're not just putting it and saying goodbye to your money. You're literally sowing a seed into the kingdom of God. And when you sow a seed into the kingdom of God, it's going to come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will men put into your bosom, the word says. So this morning as you prepare those tithes and offerings, let me remind you that you are blessed. Whether you have things, whether you have certain items or you don't have certain items, you are blessed because God says you are blessed. Amen? So prepare those tithes and offerings this morning. The worship team is going to play some music for just a few seconds so that you can finish up those offering envelopes. You can finish filling those out. And uh, the worship team is going to play some music for us. Then we're going to come back and pray over them. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's, let's take these offering envelopes. Let's just hold them up before heaven this morning. Father, we thank you that you've blessed us in so many ways. You've blessed us with, with some things that we consider to be blessings. And Father, Lord, we, you've blessed us with finances. You've allowed them to come into our hands. You've allowed us to receive them and be the vehicle by which these blessings these finances can go back out and to be a blessing to others. Father, we do not want to stop that blessing right here. We want to stay in this cycle of blessing and receiving and, and being a blessing to others. And Father, as we sow these seeds this morning, this day, Father, we do not sow, we do not just give them away, but we sow them into your kingdom. And Father, we know that when we sow into your kingdom, you're going to use them for good works and you're going to use them to further your kingdom and to, to further your word throughout this nation and throughout the nations of the world. Father, we pray a blessing upon these seeds and upon those sowers. 
And again, we pray for those that do not have a seed this morning. Father, your word says that you will provide seed to the sower as well. And so, Father, we stand in faith this morning in decreeing and declaring, O oh God, that everything we have is yours, and we surrender it back to you now, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. Ushers can come, will come forward and begin to, re, to receive your tithes and your offering envelopes. Please hold on to your connection cards and you'll have a chance to interact with those in just a few minutes. Thank you so much and God bless you. Another exciting week coming up at BCF. There's lots of things happening that we want to remind you about. Tonight, we have the movement for youth, uh, youth and young adults, 630 here at BCF. You don't want to miss out on that. And it's, we have a free gym night tonight. So you, you don't want to miss that. Friday. Oh, sorry, Friday night. 630 at, B, at BCF. Tonight's the movement. Friday night's the gym night. Wednesday morning, all uh, 55 plus. We have a Bible study at 10 a.m., and that's followed by a fitness class at 11.15. I know they kicked off last week, and they had an exciting week, and they're looking forward to that. If you're not able to join and be here at BCF, I want you to get your pens out or your smartphones right now. We want to give you a number that you can participate, and that number is 905-499-2833. That's 905-499. 4992833 Listen to the instructions and then your pin is 1234 and that way you can participate from home on that Bible study. Also we're calling all men and women. We've got a special day coming up this Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. We have a continental breakfast with the cemeterios here in Brampton. That's Pastor Rick and Pastor Kathy. We all know and love them. And it's free. And it's free, exactly. Pastor Rick will be at All People's Church, and we're encouraging all the men to please come out and join with Pastor Randy for that morning. And also Pastor Kathy will be at Faith Gospel Tabernacle. So we encourage all men and women to participate. If you need more information, you can get that after the service. Also, all ladies, we have a special girl time road trip coming up in July. Yeehaw! says the bus driver. That's right. I've been to every girl time. <laughs> On the outside. On the outside. All you ladies, that, how many people have been to girl time? Isn't it an awesome weekend that you're not going to want to miss out? We already have 18 ladies that are registered, but I know we're going to have a lot more than that. But this is your last opportunity before we open it up to other women in the city. So you're not going to want somebody else to take your spot. So you have to get registered today in the foyer. There will be ladies there that can help you. This is an awesome weekend, ladies. You are not going to want to miss. I guarantee you of that. So clear your schedules, get it on your calendar, and we'll see you there for that awesome time. Next Sunday is a special Sunday at BCF. It's graduation Sunday. And all the graduates said? We made it. Whether you're a high school, college, or university graduates, next Sunday morning we are going to pray for you and bless you. It's going to be a special Sunday that you're not going to want to miss out on. Lastly, we have another special day coming up, International Day, where we're going to have one service. That's the last Sunday in June. And that service is going to be at 1030, and it's going to be followed by refreshments. It's going to be a fun time together. We have a lot of other announcements, things happening, so please check your bulletins or visit our website for more details. Thank you and be blessed. Hey, you dads out there. So you want to be a better dad. Let me give you a few tips. You should let your kids do stuff that moms won't let them do. Make sure you teach your kid important stuff, like how to whistle or how to ride a bike. How are they going to learn without you? <sighs> Come home from work already. 
you think your kids got nothing better to do than wait by the door all day? Don't worry about the game. That's why God invented DVRs. Make sure to tuck your kids in at night and read them stories. And try not to yell. Yelling is scary. You can hear your inner voice, you know. Did you know that dad runs with mad and sad and rad? Give your kid a hug every day. Kids like hugs. Kisses, mm, not so much. Tell funny jokes. What do you call cheese that isn't yours? Nacho cheese? Must deal with tops. Maybe it's like a tiny cape that you wear in the front. You know, if you really think about it, the kids need you. You're all they've got, so you've got to be there. If we could get all the fathers out there to be better dads, then that's going to be a lot of happier kids. Thank you for being our dads. Just one light I'll let it burn out shining Shining in the darkest night And if I have one mission One life to serve you well I'll proclaim your gospel Right outside the gates of hell
reign. Risen from the dead, now you reign, now you reign. The universe applauds, the highest name of all. Jesus, you're the song that we'll be singing. God has truly blessed us. We have so many talented people and so many people that do many things to help us. And we're blessed here. Well, Pastor's away this weekend. He's down in the States in North Carolina preaching. And he's just getting ready to go into his third service today. And... Uh, I'm sure God is with him, blessing him. He's at a great church there, friends down in North Carolina, where they're reaching out into the area for Jesus, touching the military base in uh, great inroads and letting God's power be seen. And so many exciting things happening. God is just doing many different things. So yesterday we had the privilege of celebrating with Nicholas Lindsay and Erica Valles, who is now Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas Lindsay. So when two young people that love Jesus get together, it's always a privilege to participate in their wedding. And so this week, I think the marriage bug has been biting. So Roger and Renee, come on. This young man this week got very bold and he asked this young lady to marry him. And I think she said yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we congratulate you. Congregation, will you pray for them over the next little while? That God will continue to strengthen them, continue to help them, to honor him first, and to help them with the plans they make for their future. The steps of a righteous man and woman are ordered by the Lord. God bless you. You know, I know that God will use us in any relationship that we're invited into to help shine his light. But there's nothing so wonderful as two Christian people getting together to serve God together for their future. It just does something inside me that just regular weddings don't do. We still pray for the others, but bless God. It's wonderful to serve him. So along with happy times and great celebration, oh, Carleen, is that you? My goodness. They've got company from overseas. They've They've got all kinds of celebrations still going on, but they came to serve Jesus. What a wonderful example of a godly parent. In the midst of their busyness, in the midst of celebration, they still come to serve Jesus and worship with their friends and believers. God is so good. He gives us all strength and helps us. But in the midst of these great celebrations, there are often times where others are having struggles, where other people are being greatly challenged. And we have a few families that have some great challenges. So I want to encourage you, keep praying for each other. Because when you're going through a good time, somebody else isn't. When they're going through a good time, maybe you're going through a rough time. So as we pray together for each other, God lifts us up and his presence comes on the scene. 
in good times and in bad times. Many of you remember Sister Ronnie Sebastian. She was with us for a long time, and God used her greatly. And since she has been uh, in other places, God has been using her mightily all over the world. But right now, she is in a great challenge in her body. And so I would ask you to believe God with me for her. You know, pa Pastor Randy called her and he said, You know, Ronnie, I can remember so many times for so many years you told me that God spoke to you and said you would live your last days in Israel. So if that's the case, you are not in Israel yet, so it cannot be your last days yet. So we want to believe and speak faith and join our faith with what God already said on her behalf. She has touched so many of our hearts. And so we want to continue to believe. So would you stand up with me right now? And let's just pray. Father, we thank you. You're the God of all situations. Father, I thank you that nothing is too difficult for you. And no matter what the circumstances, maybe those represented here or their family members that they represent are going through, you are the God of all things. You are the God of the impossible. So, Father, we thank you that as we join our faith together, you will move, you will give wisdom, you will give instruction, and you will give direction to those that need your help right now. And, Father, for those that are struggling in their bodies, we thank you your word does not change. It's still the same today. You were the healer. You are the healer. You will always be the healer. So we thank you for your divine health to flow through this place and touch each and every one of our bodies. And, Father, for Sister Ronnie, we know you, she's in the center of your hands. We know you have her covered with your will. So, Father, just continue to let the Holy Spirit minister to her and bring strength to her body so that she can fulfill everything you've called her to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. You know, that's all we really want to do is fulfill what God has for us. Whatever it is, wherever it is, we just want to fulfill what God has for us. Now, I have a few ladies here today. Where are you that are coming with me this week? Are you here? Come. Sister Maria, where are you? Joan, who else is here? Tisha, come on up. So some ladies from the 9 a.m. service, these ladies, a few ladies from Florida are going to join us. And we are heading out this week to New York City. We are going to the Bronx. I've never been there before. Somebody said to me, aren't you afraid to go to the Bronx? And I said, I don't know what's there, so I, I'm not afraid because I've never been there. I don't know what I'm going to get faced. But uh, it doesn't really matter because Jesus has set the appointment, and so he will lead the way. And so if we use wisdom, his strength and understanding will be with us. And then the bottom line is, if it's my time to go, it doesn't matter if I'm in Brampton, India, New York, on a cruise ship. If God says it's my time, it's my time. So bless God. So why are these ladies coming with me? I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> They're coming because we're going to work in a woman's shelter. It's the largest shelter in uh, the New York area. There's over 200 women there. And we're going to be painting. I hope you got your painting clothes ready. And we're going to make their shelter just look a little bit nicer. And then we're going to do makeovers. And uh, some companies have been very generous. Pastor Angela's company, Manatech, has been very generous. Revlon has been very generous. And we've got makeup, nail polish, creams, all kinds of stuff that we've already shipped down there that's waiting for us. And uh, we've got testimonies. We've got music. We've got all kinds of things that will touch their hearts through practical and spiritual ways to make inroads for Jesus' life into the lives of these women that have had such difficulties in their natural life. So won't you stand up one more time and raise your hands towards these ladies and say, Father, I thank you for these women. 
I thank you for the opportunity that is opened and that they are courageous, that they are bold, that they are anointed of you to walk through an open door and take territory for the kingdom of God. So, Father, I thank you, whether they're painting, whether they're giving a testimony, whether they're putting makeup on or doing nails, whatever it is, your presence can move. So we give you honor and glory and praise. And, Father, we thank you for a safe trip there and a safe return in Jesus' name. And good shopping in Jesus' name. I'm bringing the shopping queen from Florida to lead the way. <laughs> Pastor Jeannie Rogers is coming, and she's a New Yorker, and she knows her way around. So she's going to help us out. So bless you. Have you got your Bibles today? We've been looking at the life of the Spirit. We're in Acts chapter 6. And here in Acts chapter 6, God is adding to the church. The numbers are growing. Great things are happening. But then one part of the church gets upset. They think that some of the widows aren't being looked after the way they're supposed to be. And the other part of the church, they're happy because their widows are okay. And so this dissension comes within the church. And as we read in Acts chapter 6, as this dissension comes the apostles decide that they would pick from amongst the congregation some men that can help them move and make wise decisions. And um, just let me turn to Acts chapter 6 here. And so uh, in verse 5 and 6, it says that they chose from amongst them men full of faith, and full of the Holy Spirit. Now, these men that they were choosing were going to be doing practical things. They were going to be taking care of the widows, making sure those that had needs, the needs were taken care of. They would maybe be even setting up chairs, fixing the squeaky doors. They were going to do practical things, being servants, but the Bible says that when they chose these men, they looked for men full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Now, you may ask, why do you need to be full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit to hand out food? Anybody can hand out food. Well, that's true. Anybody can. But when you have a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit, picking up those bags and handing those bags, the tangible presence of God will move from one thing to the other. The smile on their face, the word of encouragement, the life of God in them can give to someone else that nothing else can do. So this is the pattern that God has set. Men full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, to serve the people of the church. And why did they do this? They did this because the Bible says, because then the apostles could give themselves to prayer and studying of the word. So when they came before the people, they had the power of God, they knew the word of God, and they could proclaim what God was speaking that would bring life to the people. And as they did that, the Bible says that the church continued to grow, the life of God continued to move, and miracles moved amongst their midst. Isn't that the kind of church you want today? Don't you want to have the life of God moving? Don't you want to see the power of God? Well, to do it, we need to do what the Bible said here. Now, this morning, I was so happy to see these wonderful men standing up here. Men that have given themselves to serve in the church. Men full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, ready to sound a sound from their heart that Jesus has blessed them with a gift of singing. So they let that singing bless us and touch our hearts. 
Look at Joseph down there. First Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. But even though he's a new father, even though he has a job, he took time to practice and let the gift God's placed in him be a blessing to all of us. God is so wonderful. And today, I want to challenge the fathers because God is looking for fathers to rise up. We are living in a fatherless generation. Amen. What we see in society is a result of a fatherless generation. And God is looking for his man to rise up and take their place. You know, on Friday, I was sitting at my table in the kitchen, and I went to um, get, I had some books, and I was studying, and I went to get my Bible, and I realized I'd left it upstairs. But, you know, I was a little lazy, and I didn't want to go back upstairs. So uh, over on the bookshelf, we have some other Bibles. So I went and grabbed one. And when I sat down and opened it, I realized that this was my father's Bible. You know, I didn't even know it was in my house, because actually it's supposed to be in my sister's house. I'm not sure how it got left in my house, but... I'll have to get it to her. When Mummy died, I got her Bible. And the deal was when Daddy passed on, my sister would get his Bible. But somehow I have it. But when I opened it, I found a check in it. And the check my dad had in his Bible that I be, believe he left there so we could read it. It says, from the bank of eternal life. And it's payable to the order of whosoever believeth. And the sum of the check is eternal life. And it's signed by Jesus, John 10. And as I looked at it, all I could think of was the heritage and legacy my father has left me. To be a servant of Jesus. What legacy are you leaving your children? What example are you showing them? My dad ran a hardware store. He didn't work in, for the church, but he worked at the church all the time. You know, on Sunday... We'd be leaving, going home for dinner. And um, we'd go out the door, wouldn't notice a thing. Go home, we'd have dinner. Then after dinner, Daddy'd say, I just need to run back to the church for a little while. And Mommy would say, why are you going? And he'd say, when we went out the door, I noticed the door wasn't swinging properly. I'm just going to go fix it so it's okay for tonight's service. See, that was my dad. No big deal. Don't tell anybody. Just go do what needs to be done. That was the example my dad left for me. What kind of an example are you leaving for your children? God is looking for godly men. He's looking for men that will rise up and take their place. Just as in these verses, men full of the Holy Spirit, anointed to God, that the anointing of God would flow through them, that the anointing of God would speak to those around. I looked up some statistics, and I found out that 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90% of homeless runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of children who show behavior disorders are from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists with major anger problems come from fatherless homes. And 71% of most dropouts come from fatherless homes. This is the generation we are living in. But God has an answer to this generation. He has men of faith, men full of the Holy Spirit, 
that he is calling to rise up and take their place and help those ones that need it. And maybe, maybe your family, God has blessed you and you're doing fine and God is helping you to be a good example. But maybe you know someone. Maybe you know a single mother that's struggling. Maybe you know somebody with boys that they, they just need some help. Maybe you know another father that just needs you to come alongside him and say, you can do this. You're a good father. And just encourage him along and help him know how to be a good father. Just like that little girl was telling us today. You know, God wants to help us. He wants to rise himself up through us. He is the father to the fatherless. He is the father, but he is looking for men to bridge the gap between those that don't know and him to bridge the gap, to bring them to that place so they understand how much he cares. Maybe some of you have grown up. And you say, well, I didn't have a father and I turned out okay. Why should you let someone else go through the struggles you went through when God's given you so much? Help someone else. God is looking for us to care for each other. He's looking us to servants share our life. Jesus was a servant to all. He shared his life with all. God is looking for us to rise up and share our lives as servants to all. That means we be to someone whatever they need in the best way we can. Will we make it all the time? No. But with God's help, we'll make it more and more. And you know, I just felt like today on a Father's Day, I would like to honor a few men. I told them in the first service, Pastor Randy isn't here, so I have a little leeway, so I can just kind of. But you know, we're able to do what we do because we have others. Pastor Reed, please stand up. It's from the day we came here, Pastor Reed stood beside my husband. He knows without a shadow of a doubt that Pastor Reed has his back. He doesn't have to worry about it. He doesn't have to think about it. He knows. He knows that if he's not here, Pastor Reed will make sure it's okay. Brother Rudy, stand up, please. Pastor Rudy has been here, too. He's been by our side. He's been faithful. You see, men of integrity, men of honor, I want you to know this is what God has placed in this place. Why has God given us men of honor and integrity? Pastor Harrison, stand up. Pastor Brian. These men have stood beside us. We can call them at any time of the day or night, and they will be there for us. But I was thinking, you know, your pastor, Pastor Randy, he is a man of integrity. I can speak to that for over 45 years of being married to him. He is a man that loves God with all his heart. He is a man that his yes is yes and his no is no. He is a man that is wise. He considers the things that God is speaking before he moves. He waits to hear God's voice. He is a man that has made himself accountable to others that have authority over our lives. And he is willing to let them speak into his life. He is willing to let them correct him when he needs it and walk in it. And I believe because he is a man like that, that God has given him men like that to stand beside him, to stand behind him. Now, I could go throughout this congregation because there are many of you sitting in the chairs. Some of you have been here for a very long time. Some of you we have known in different situations. But if I did that, I would surely miss somebody. So many of you sitting here, 
You know who you are. You know. You know, David, you just came in here. Ruel, you're here all the time. You know, Larry, you know, some of these people probably don't even know you. But Larry, you have been faithful to God in this house. And God has seen your faithfulness. And you have been faithful to us. And you have supported us. And on Father's Day, I want to honor you as a man of God, strong, a man of truth, because your yes is yes and your no is no. And that's what God wants from you. Coach, you're new on the block. But you just came and came into the family. But you know, there's something that creeps in sometimes. And it did in this book of Acts in chapter 6. It crept in. And it started to work amongst the believers. Okay, you guys can sit down. <laughs> They've seen your face enough. But it started to work amongst the believers. And as it did, it was bringing dissension amongst the ranks. And that's a thing called jealousy. Because jealousy started to move in. They didn't like what Stephen was doing after he was anointed, after he was commissioned to go and feed the poor and help the people and do the practical service. People got jealous, and they wanted what Stephen had. But you see, you can never have what someone else has. And if you try to take it, you are just robbing and stealing from God. So never try to take what isn't yours. Wait for God to put you in that place. Be patient and honor God and love him. Serve him with your whole heart and wait for him to open the place. You know, sometimes somebody comes and they say, well, I want to sing, but they don't want to come to practice. They don't want to come for a sound check. They just want to get up and sing. Well, no. Prove yourself in God's house, the Bible says. That we should know those who work amongst us. So we don't just let people come in and do what they want. Because that would be disobedient to God. God is looking for men that will rise up. That will take their place and be godly men. And take those, like these statistics of this fatherless generation, and start to get compassion for others and want more than just for my family to be okay, but want for those around me, those I see, that we would pray, Father, open my eyes. Let me see those that need your life. Let me see those that need your help, that understand that some things we do. You know, many of you help with the chairs, and we appreciate it. But do you consider when you're helping with the chairs, you're not just piling chairs. You're not just setting chairs out so people can sit. But you are commissioned from the Lord God on high to put chairs down so that when people come and sit in them, they can receive from God. They can worship God. And because that chair is there, they have a place to come to that God can move and touch their life. I tell you, when we start to see what we do, whether it's the smallest little thing or a big thing, as part of what makes a difference in someone's life for the kingdom of God, then God starts to add to the church. He starts to bless his people. He starts to move in and let his presence be heard and let his presence be seen so that the church will truly be what he calls it to be. In Romans 15, in verse 5, it says, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant to you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may be one mind and one mouth, glorifying God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. United we stand, divided we fall. So as we come together, as we worship God, 
whether we're stacking chairs, whether we're doing a Wednesday Bible study with seniors, whether we're doing an exercise class or we're here in the gym on uh, Saturdays with the children that come to Heroes Camp, whatever it is we do, we see that we are here united in the presence of God, using the gifts God has given us to allow his presence to come. And what better day than Father's Day for men to rise up, to take their place, not only with their own families, but with those around that God has brought around you. Now, that doesn't leave the women out. But you know, generally, women come easier. Dr. Cho in South Korea, largest church in the world, uh, really felt God had spoke to him to move into Japan. So he spoke about it. He, he was trying to rise up teams. But you see, Japan had been known at that time as very dark and very hard. And he couldn't get any men to go. And one day, he had visited his office. And five women came. And they said, Dr. Cho, send us. But you see, Dr. Cho wanted the men. But those women were willing to go, so he sent them. They went and rented an apartment. And every day, they would ride the elevator. And anybody that came into the elevator, they would say, hello, God bless you. Then as they got to know them, and the people came in the elevator with bags, they would take the bags from them. They'd say, let us help you with that. That looks heavy. Let us carry your bags. They would carry the bags to their apartment. Eventually, the people started asking them in for tea. And slowly, one by one, they started building relationships. Then when they had a few relationships, they invited them over for a time of fellowship. And as they had their time of fellowship, they shared their personal stories with them and started leading them to Jesus. And the first church of Dr. Cho's was being established in Japan. And then as that church started to get established, Dr. Cho had visits at his office. Men started visiting Dr. Cho. Dr. Cho, I feel called to Japan. And so Dr. Cho, in his wisdom, released the men to go to Japan. But you know, when the men arrived in Japan, the women didn't say, well, we've done all the work, you're not taken over. The women said, what can we do to help you? You see, they were there to work to build the kingdom of God. The men were a little slow in coming, but they did come. So I'm challenging you men today. Rise up. Look for places to serve. God wants to commission and anoint you. He wants to bless your life, just like he did here. If we took time and read the end of that chapter, we would see where Stephen, as he was sharing with the people, caring for the people, how some got upset because of that jealousy rising up within them. They even hired people to lie against him. Be it known, nothing has changed. Everybody won't like what you do. Some people will have things to say about what you do. But don't be moved by what people say. Only be moved by what God says, because God's word is truth. And people's words will fall, but God's word will stand true on your behalf. And as they brought Stephen before the council, the very last verses in that chapter say that as the people lied against him to council, as council looked at his face, all they could see was the glow of the presence of God upon him. I tell you, people can come against you. People can not like what you do. They cannot understand you. But if your heart is pure before God, if you are a man of faith, if you are full of the power of the Holy Spirit, 
God is on your side. And if God is on your side, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn, the Bible says. Because when we walk with Jesus, it's him that opens the doors. And he is looking today for men that will rise up in this fatherless generation, that will look for opportunities to share what God has placed within you with others. Maybe you say you've grew, you grew up without a father, and, and you now have an opportunity to start a new line, to start a new legacy, to change what was into what God wants it to be. And for you single mothers, God wants to bless your life. As you honor him, he will help you. His word declares that he will be a father to the fatherless. He will bring his presence as you honor him. He will help you, and he will bring people that can help you. So trust him with everything you have. Trust him and work for him. You know, I think that the lesson we can see in this chapter of Acts chapter 6 is the primary way in church, all throughout church history, that the enemy strategy comes to destroy. You know, John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to bring life. And you see, if the enemy can move in, if he can keep the men quiet, if he can keep the men still, if he can keep the men busy with, with things, with their work, with their this, with their that, that they don't have time to serve and to set that service example to their families, then the enemy doesn't have to worry about the church. He doesn't have to worry because nothing's going to happen. But when godly men rise up, when godly men take their place, then the kingdom of heaven is blessed and the kingdom of darkness suffers violence. Matthew says, let the violent come. Rise up, men of God, and take your place. Take your place with strength, with dignity, and with honor. Know that as you take your place, some of you may say, well, you know, you don't hear my wife all week. Ladies, it's time to quit nagging. It's time to stop being the Holy Spirit for your husband. Let the Holy Spirit do his job. And your job is to love and respect him. And the more love and respect you give him, the more he will rise up, the more he will take his place, and if it's starting to get you and you're not seeing what you want, then you get the Holy Spirit and you go in your prayer closet and you remind the Father of what he said your husband is. He is a man of God. He is a man of integrity. He is a man of honor. And he is a man that will be the father to the fatherless because God's word declares it. And the more you speak it, the more you declare it, the more the Holy Spirit is free to work on your behalf. But the more your husband is free to receive of the Holy Spirit and you will see a change in your home. You will see a change. And when a change comes to your home, the result of it shows in the church. I tell you, it's a win-win situation. When you work with God, you can never lose. You are guaranteed a win. And how many love a win? Yes, I know many of you were watching the Italians and the British yesterday. <laughs> I was very disappointed sitting beside Pastor Harrison as he was rooting for the Italians with my British heritage. (laughs) 
I tell you. But you see, with God, it's a win-win situation. With soccer, you're never quite sure. You think your team's winning, and then someone takes them out. But with God, you never lose. He is always working on your behalf, and he is always moving to bring about his goodness. So on this Father's Day, I challenge you men to rise up and be a godly man. Set the example. So Saturday, get up and go gather with the men and get strengthened. Receive from God. Get a free breakfast. Ladies, go gather with the women. Receive from God. And be blessed. And know that as you're receiving, your husband's getting blessed too. I tell you, God is amazing. So in a few minutes, we're going to move over to the chapel. And we're going to celebrate with some water baptisms on this Father's Day. And it's a blessed day for David and Indra. As on Father's Day, their son is getting baptized. We've been waiting for this day, Kevin. We've been praying for you. We've been believing God. And as you establish this day, a new pattern in your life, you will see the presence of God come and the blessing of God come, just as your mother and father have set the example. I tell you, God is amazing. He is wonderful. So as you go today, look at the back of your connection card. There's a memory verse for you. This week, serve others in the name of Jesus. Encourage your friends and family. And find a place where God can use you. Read Acts 7. And if you want to go on all that media stuff and put your comments... Maybe, Pastor Brian, next week you can explain to us how we actually do that. For some of us that have it but don't know how to do some of this stuff. And God will bless us and use us. Ladies, don't forget to register for girl time. It's going to be amazing time in God. But if you can't go to girl time, we do have reveal coming in November. And it's going to be an amazing time right here. So why don't you stand up? Father, I pray for all the fathers today, for every man in this place, Father, that your presence will be upon them, that your presence will go with them. Father, speak to them and let them know that you're there strengthening them and helping them. Let them know that your presence is around them and they will bring honor and glory to your name. As you're standing right now, the ushers are going to come. And for every man, we have just a small token gift for you so that you can shine your shoes, so you can go out and shine for Jesus. And every time you shine your shoe, you remember you're shining for Jesus. And remember, Saturday night, I put my shoes out, and my dad shined them. Saturday night, I put my shoes out, my husband shines them. So shine your wife's shoes. Bless her. So God bless you this week. After the service, we are going to need a few men to help with the chairs again. We appreciate all you do. Karim back there, he does so much. He has his whole team that help him. So many people that bring value and honor to what God is doing here. We appreciate you so much, and we bless you. Please, if you can stay and join us for the baptism, do that. for watching Bramley Christian Fellowship Church. We hope you enjoyed our service.